Okay. Uh, it, this is going to be another shorty, but I thought I'd make a separate um, this little presentation. And it has to do with common eye and effect. And uh, we'll work work through it in a minute. And but it's it. um so it says up to now we've been working how could pure water. Uh, what happens if another salt contains one of the ions um however insoluble soluble salt is added? <clears throat> okay, so this, let's say we have this expression of um, this equation. Take lead iodide and put it in water, splits apart, and some of it splits apart in lead and iodide two eyes okay um okay now what so what we can see is this is uh what we could do is we can make less of the pbi so in, um, soluble by forcing the reaction to the left so uh over here we this is what happens when you um, when you mix uh, lead with iodide. It forms it forms this colored solution here. Uh, but what you can do if you add one of the ions, either or four, what it'll do is it'll push the reaction back to the left, and that that means you'll get uh, more solid material. Less of it will dissolve. Okay, so. So by this is following Ella Chatelet's principle by adding um, on either side of the equation, you can push the reaction left or right. So what we're going to do is add a common ion. So maybe we're going to add like Ki, and if we add Ki to it, what it's going to do is going to push the reaction back to left, and it's going to more form more of the Pi two, which is this yellow stuff. Okay. So um, or you could add more lead. Uh, maybe as uh, like lead nitrate, and that'll push the reaction back to the left. And so what we're going to do is be able to change the solubility of of a salt by by adding a common ion to it. Okay, so we're going to look at three scenarios here. Um, so we're going to take uh, take silver chromate, put it in water, pure water, measure solubility of how of our silver chromate, and then what we're going to do is um, measure the uh, solubility of the silver chromate and silver nitrate. <clears throat> okay, and so what's going to happen is that silver from the silver nitrate is going to push the, should push the reaction to the left, and it should make uh, should make this less soluble, which means this number, the KSP, will go down, okay? So it may go from 10 to the minus third to 10 to the minus seventh because you have a whole lot less product compared to reactant. So there's more reactant than product. So what we're doing is pushing the reaction to make more reactant, and that's going to decrease the KSP. Um, and then finally, we're going to look at, instead of adding silver ion as our common ion we're going to add a chromate ion and again it'll push it to the left and um and it should see the ksp go down as well so this is the two things we start out with we start with the silver chromate and uh, the silver uh, dissociating and the chromate dissociating and the ksp is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. so you can see already that the uh Right, there isn't much, there isn't very much um, reactant. Okay, so what we want to do is find out uh, what is the solubility of how much, in a sense, how much of the silver chromate will dissolve in water before it becomes saturated. Okay, so we set up the ice, ice table and um, so we're going to use this equation. So you have two. So you have to have a two here and so forth. And so you got KSP equals, remember, the, so the Ag2 squared, because there's a two here, times the chromate, S equal 2x squared. So 2x in here and x in here. So it's equals 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. 
<clears throat> and sulfur X, and we get the solubility of the silver chromate is 3.3 times 10 to the minus fourth. Okay, essentially, it's saying one out of 10,000 molecules splits apart into water. Okay, this is like one, uh, one over 10,000. More technically, it's three over 10,000. Okay, uh, so got a little interruption there. I had to make answer phone call. Okay, so um, okay, now what we're gonna do is take uh, the silver chromate, and now we're gonna put it in a solution of silver nitrate. And so what's going to happen is the silver of the silver nitrate is going to push the reaction to the left, okay, and that's going to, that should decrease the amount of silver chromate uh, that gets dissolved, and that number should go down. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so we go ahead and plug it in. Uh, the uh, there isn't going to be much change in the silver, so that's that's going to be 0.1, and uh, so we go ahead and solve this. And we do see that now the solubility of the silver chromate is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 10th. So it's gone from 1 in 10,000 to just about 1 in uh, 10 billion. Okay, just but, so that's how much this is forced the reaction to the left. And then finally, what we're doing is we're going to take. Uh, the same solutions, the silver chromate, and put it in sodium chromate, and go through the same same ordeal. So now we have the chromate in there, but it's going to push the reaction to the left, and we go through it, and we find um, the new uh, solubility at 10 to the minus fifth, which is less than the original, which was 10 to the minus fourth. So this changed the solubility by about a power 10. Okay, so. In pure water, the uh, solubility of the silver chromate was, mm -hmm. we'll just look at the exponent, it was 10 to the minus fourth, which is one out of 10,000. But by adding the silver nitrate in the concentration, it, we, we decrease the solubility by over a million, okay? Uh, by uh, adding the uh, sodium chromate, we were able to push it to the left and make it even less soluble um, by a power of 10. All right, that's it. That's a shorty, and I'll catch you at the next one in a minute. Okay, thanks.